Reporting I. This meeting of the Back Bay Amateur Astronomers will now come to order. Louder, please. Yeah, a little bit louder. Louder? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, I have an award to present for a guy who I have. Whenever I see him, I haven't had the awards. And when I have the awards, I didn't see him. Mm -hmm. Patrick Martulli. Yeah. This is your Network Star Award for last year for activity uh, supporting our events. Voluntary. Voluntary by the Night Sky Network. Okay, let's see. Patrick Martulli. And I don't see anybody else on this list is here except for uh, Roland Downing, but he's on do Zoom. So how am I going to give that to Roland and what in the world are we having there? You just have to say, got it. Got it. All right. You got to consent to being recorded. Yeah, that looks like uh, Sandy. That's not Roland. All right. <laughs> All right, Sandy. Okay. Uh, first of all, we'll start off with the reports. Our vice president is going to tell us what's on the schedule for the next this month and the rest of the month. Next month. All right. Hand over to myself here. Good stuff coming up. Good stuff. All right. Just gave you power to share. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You weren't real close, so it gave me time. Oh, I see. It's on the different. Uh, I had it. I logged in and everything, and now I don't know where it is. It's on uh, Firefox. Oh, Firefox. Yes. Okay, now let me see if I can uh, go back to the other one and share it. No, that's not it. Close that one. What is that? The blue one. The one all the way on the right. That's the one I said. Got it. Okay, here we go. Thank you for your patience. Everybody see the screen okay? <clears throat> Tonight uh, is the, the uh, Back Bay Astronomy Club meeting on the 3rd. This weekend is full of all kinds of good stuff. Chipox site visit from the Chipox committee. <clears throat> and you guys may want to talk about that some more. Um, I scheduled at 9 p.m. at the Marsh Causeway in uh north carolina there the address um, let me go ahead and put it up here because it's pretty what what is that update no no don't update well anyway uh, i hope <laughs> the marsh causeway here's a field of targets um uh, that, that i just uh, compiled that are all visible if we have good weather huge amount of messier objects some ic objects ngc objects at least 41 targets there and there's the address 601 Marsh Causeway Island. If you use um, Waze or Google, uh, it'll take you right to it. It's a one half mile after a short bridge. Easy to miss the turnoff to the left. Okay, so that's going to be a good one. I hope uh, you'll come out to that. It's it's, it's nice to have a, an event that uh, it's really club members only. But if you want to bring a guest, certainly go ahead and do that. All Ooh, right. Bug spray. Yeah. Oh yeah, the bug spray. They got yeah. they got huge bugs and some of them have oh, side the numbers. Area is basically a giant swamp. It's it's a marsh. That's right. Uh, the Croatan star stargazing is uh, eight thirty a week from today. I'm signed up for that. Please, please RSVP and sign up for those things. Corn watch on the fourth. Sky watch Northwest West River Park on the fifth. Followed immediately by the Perseids meteor shower at a different location. Uh, we're going to do the meteor shower. We have a nice darker sky and a good, nice, low, low horizon, maybe a two degree up above the horizon, either side of the uh, north, south, east, west. So that's a good one for the Perseids. That's gonna be hopefully a good one. The, the moon won't really come up crescent until uh, like three o'clock in the morning, okay? Will you be there all night? Uh, no, just till three, because that's when the moon comes up, it's gonna destroy everything. Right. If the moon was to come out, we can stay all night though. We could, yeah, yeah, if, if you want to. You can you could stay you could stay on that. Uh, Corn watch night watch on the nineteenth and twentieth. That's overnight. Club member eighteenth and nineteenth. Corn watch. You're right. Corn watch is the eighteenth. Night watch is the nineteenth. Uh, Garden stars. 
Thursday the 24th, Saturday, Sunday the 26th. <clears throat> Boardwalk Astronomy number four, the end of the month. Uh, we had a pretty big turnout last time. Uh, lots, uh, lots and lots of uh, Russian and uh, uh, French and all kinds of foreigners that uh, were looking through the telescope. And uh, I'm glad they, they were translating what, what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. what, what's that? Oh yeah, there was a lot of kids there. Please, please do come and volunteer. Bring your scope. And if you don't have a scope, just come and uh, join us for the moral support. Uh, so that's on the 29th at the end of this month. Then the following month, the club meetings on the seventh, first Thursday. Navy camp out in Stars. Corn watch, of course, the eighth. Navy camp out in Stars on the at nine o'clock. Sky watch, Northwest River Park, the ninth. East Coast Star Party starts the 14th and goes all the way to Sunday the 17th. So if you don't have your tickets for that, sign up soon. I don't know, how, we'll get a count on that in a minute. We'll, we'll let the other folks uh, talk about that. Night Watch the 16th through the 17th. The Kempsville Rec Center, 7.30 p.m. Uh, George uh, does another presentation and we, we like lots of scopes out there for the evening. Garden Scars, the Garden Stars the 19th. Night Hike, I'm not sure. 21st. Garden Stars the 21st. Garden Stars the 21st, can't read. Night Hike the 22nd, Saturday, Sunday, the, the 10 o'clock uh, on Saturday. International, I'm not sure what this is. Let me look it up and see what this international thing is. It's not scheduled. International Astronomy Week. Yes, it's, it's not scheduled. It's requested, but it's not scheduled. Because they want uh, uh, during the day and they want to see planets or something. So I, I put out a call to them and said, hey, we can't show you the planets. Uh, in the middle of the daytime, maybe Venus on a good day, but we couldn't do that. And that just about wraps it up. Boardwalk Astro Astronomy again, the 25th of September, which is Boardwalk. weird because it's a Monday. Yeah, I was going to say, that's supposed to be on a Tuesday. It usually is, but I, I guess we schedule it on a Monday for some well, reason. It's, it's supposed to be on a Tuesday, the 26th. Okay. I think that was moved because yeah, moved Boardwalk it. has an event on yeah, Tuesday. And that's right. We did it on purpose. So it is a Monday. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's Monday. That's oh, right. right. So if there's any questions, uh, please come now. Uh, George, you can present it to me at the next meeting we both attend. That's for Roland's uh, text or uh, okay. chat. Okay. Any questions? All right. I will stop sharing and turn it back over to El Presidente. That's us. Okay. So, and how do I get on the camera? Uh, you are. You are. Uh, you have to you start are. Okay. There, All there right. You you're on. I forgot to uh, mention what is the uh, the uh, door prize tonight. It's a set of NASA lithographs taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. This is a picture of the Triangulum Galaxy. This is two merging galaxies, inter interacting galaxies. <clears throat> Here's another galaxy, UGC. 2885 is a supernova 1987A. Another two interacting and merging galaxies, NGC 3314, Doratus, a turbulent star forming region in the constellation Dorado. Another star forming nebula. And a lithograph of the what they call the Jovian planets, the great uh, ice planets and, and gas planets. And every one of these lithographs has an explanation on the back, what it is and what it's about. So this is the, uh, the door prize for tonight. Okay, well, now it's time for the secretary's report. I motion that we dispense with the reading of the minutes from the last meeting. It has been moved that we move, we dispense with the reading of the minutes. We have a second. Second, we have, it's been moved and seconded. Do we have uh, all in favor say aye? Aye. Opposed? Good morning. Okay. 
Brian? Yes, Brian? Sir. Yes, sir. Sign in, please. <laughs> we dispense with the boring secretary stuff so we can get to the good treasurer stuff. I also have another presentation to make of the uh, <laughs> Night Sky <laughs> Network star, network star to Brian Lafitte. For voluntary oh. As for volunteer work, bringing astronomy to the people. Okay, we dispensed with the reading of the minutes, and I misplaced my list here. There we go. Okay, we all get, we're also going to skip. Oh. We're not going to skip the treasurer support. Yes, I guess it's already up. Support. That's the whole reason why. Support. Go ahead, Rich. Before I start, too, I want to address Jeff's defeatist attitude about observing things during the day. So, <laughs> after the great dimming in Beetlejuice, um, you know, in 2019, eight more amateurs started to monitor the scar. There's this dude in Germany using pet photometry figured out a method and a technique where he could accurately measure Betelgeuse during the day. So he's been closing those typical seasonal gaps when, you know, it'd be too bright or daytime. You couldn't observe Betelgeuse. This guy is getting actual day. I'm not exactly sure how he did it or how his comp stars are working, but he's getting accurate measurements to fill those gaps that scientists are actually using. So don't, don't discount the daytime. <laughs> just uh just just figure out how instead of saying i can't all right so on to the treasurer report um we have a good amount of money we have almost seventy eight hundred dollars this was an increase from of 129 dollars from the previous month um before that we were up you know you're like we we had like ten thousand dollars and stuff it's because we paid out our scholarships in um june wait in May. So uh, primary scholarship, Georgia June scholarship, those uh, checks have been cashed. And if you want to look at the numbers of what we have in those accounts right now, we are almost fully funded for the next year. So we are in fantastic shape. We have $1,300 in some change in primary scholarship. We get $250 for every boardwalk astronomy we do. So We'll, we'll be there already for the next year. We got $900 in Georgia June. So raffle usually makes a couple hundred and, you know, donations. So we're, 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 we're good there. And then 5,500 in the um, general fund, we've already passed through all of our major expenses for the year. The only one that we're going to have coming up is East coast star party, which we'll have to start writing some check. We actually, put the first funds out for that um, happen, but it'll be in this month in August. Um, but we, we've we collected a lot um, in that too, in that we have so far East Coast Star Party, we have collected almost $1,500. So people are signing up. Um, I've had 14 payments and you see some of these, I don't get what actually is it. Some of these are for multiple people you know, two people. So we probably have 17, 18 people signed up at the moment. So um, only one new member this month that's, been, you know, typically we, we, we've been running in like three or four a month, but we only had one join this month to bring us up to 177 members. So we are um, looking good. And if anyone has any questions, now's the time. I have a question. All right. The uh, the uh, the uh, boardwalk astronomy we don't have to split that anymore. We were splitting it with class middle school, and uh, according to Dale, I just talked to him last boardwalk. He said we don't have to split the money anymore. So maybe we get five hundred instead of two fifty. Oh really? Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, is Chuck not coming anymore? No, he's he's no longer the planetarium director. I saw that. Chuck he's, Dibbs. That yeah. No, he's not. Uh, no, he's teaching. He, he, Resigned from it. He went back to teach. He's teaching math. Hmm. Does we have a new director? I don't know who. We're, we're going to have to reach out to him, obviously. Yeah, for meetings and stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there uh, any tax implications that, we need, that you know about, Rich, if we're carrying so much money compared to how we normally operated? 
So we are well under the threshold. I think the um, where it starts kicking in, where you have to do some actual reporting, where you don't can't do the nine ninety in anymore, is uh, gross receipts of twenty five thousand dollars in a year. Okay. So yeah, no, we're not messing with that. We're not, nowhere close. Okay, hey, Rich, are you coming to Chip Oaks uh, Saturday eleven? Yeah, I'll be there Saturday. All right, thank you. And uh, Rich wrote me a check for four hundred fifty dollars worth of star party prizes already, so they are uh, on the way from California. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, one more that thing. wasn't in those figures because that happened in this month. Yeah, it'll this, be in the next report. Does the seventy-seven hundred dollars include the fifteen hundred from the East Coast Star Party, or is that in a separate? Yes, event? that includes that money. So. Is we're collecting the money is going straight into the club treasury, and then we'll pay out all the expenses from the um, club treasury. Okay. So that's that's why I said usually by this time of the year we've paid out all our major expenses, which tends to be insurance, AL dues, um, things like that, our PO box. Um, those have all been paid, but we we still have to pay out the the star party cost, um, which will come in like. We'll have to get some. It's probably something we need to talk about is getting the Porta Johns ordered, yes. and then what we paid to folks. The door prizes were already, were just uh, bought by Bruce and reimbursed. So that kind of stuff, food for the cookout. Well, okay. hopefully we're gonna know details after some Saturday. Yep. Yep. We get tw ten Porta Johns. Get a warm fuzzy. <laughs> yeah i'm sure that's one of the things we'll talk about since for those who don't know we we went out there we had everything set up but then the park ranger left and now we're kind of starting back over with somebody new who hasn't been as responsive and apparently the old pair uh the the ranger who left uh ben he he didn't really like turn over any records of anything or tell anybody what was going on so all the other people like we don't know who you are what are you trying to do? I was talking to George on Saturday, Sunday about that. And mm -hmm. we have a member in the club. Um, you know their name? Uh, Brenda Butler. Brenda Butler and her family owns property west of here. Like out by the Windsor area, apparently. Somewhere where it's dark. And that might be a backup in case everything falls through on Saturday. Because we really, we don't know what's going to happen Saturday. Okay. Just a heads up so everybody here knows. <laughs> okay. 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 Do we have uh, any more questions about the treasurer's report? Do we have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? I have a motion to accept. Okay. It has been moved. Second. Second. Third. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. This report is accepted. <laughs> okay. I don't suppose we have any report from the scholarship Nothing committee because we gave the scholarships out last month and uh, did they cash the check? They cashed the checks, yes. yes. They're very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and the RRIT, I just checked the RRT, the remote robotic rapid, rapid response. response robotic telescope on Fan Mountain is not in service right now. They are resilvering re the mirror. So, all right. Old business. Does anybody have any old business besides me? I don't think there's anyone that did. Sign, please. Okay. Raffle. Okay. Old business I have. T-shirts. Yes, T-shirts. We got a bunch of the T-shirts for sale. If you want the BBA T-shirt with a nice logo on the front and our motto on the back, bringing astronomy to the people of Hampton Roads. I've got two XL, XL, large, small, medium, gray, or blue. So if anybody wants a T-shirt, let me know and see me after the meeting. Oh, we're in the solar classes. Oh, and we also have solar glasses. Uh, if anybody wants to take some to sell, you can take some and sell them for, we're selling them for $2 a piece because uh, the price is going to go up the closer we get to the eclipse. There's an annual eclipse on the 13th of this month, or of, uh, 13th of October, rather. And there's the total eclipse 
next April 8th, April, next year on April 8th. Uh, and I've already checked the website. Some people are selling these for $10. Some are selling for $5. A few of them are selling for about the same price we are. But uh, the price will go up between now and then. So we need to tell people about those now. I, I do recommend we sell a lot of them since we spent a lot of money to make them. Yes. So we, we want to the them. next. If we don't sell them all, if we don't sell them all. We have enough for the next ten solar eclipses. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. You gotta wait a while for that. Uh, next one in the U.S. is what, like twenty seventy or something? Twenty forty five. Well, we'll we'll give them to uh, Kent Blackwell. My to five year old son will be able to sell them in his like senior citizen years. Is there any other old business we need to talk about? How about new business? Any new business? I was just going to say about these solar glasses. Mm -hmm. Do you think we paid 56 cents for a solar glass? Do you think we should sell for a dollar? We so could. We can still make, I mean, we're doing really good on our profit thing. Sure. Why don't we, we sell all those things for uh, $2 or 5000 of them? We're going to put us pretty close to that twenty-five thousand dollars threshold. <laughs> yeah. I can sell them on lawn days. Okay. 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 Yeah. Motion to sell solar clips glasses for one dollar. It has been moved. There's a second. Oh, David. Um, there's a lot of nice sunspots. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It has been moved that we change the price to a dollar. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we change the price of the solar glasses to one dollar each. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. We're going to sell them for a dollar and I'll change my sign. Maybe. <laughs> and we'll take them to all of our events like the Navy camp out and to the Naval base and so yeah. forth. Okay. Okay. I've got a few things I want to talk about. Uh, October events. October is going to be a very busy month. Oh, yeah. We didn't go on the schedule, but let me take a look at the schedule. Uh, our meeting, our BBA meeting is on the 5th of October. Corn Watch is on the 6th. Saturday, Sunday. No, I mean, Sky Watch is on the 7th. The following week is Stanton River Star Party. However, we also have two other events scheduled that week. One is a whole weekend. Oh, yeah. On Tuesday the 10th, Blackwater Library Solar Viewing. And on the 13th, 14th, and 15th, we're supposed to be at ODU for the Fantastic Planets weekend. Just like last year, they did Mars. The year before that, they did the moon. They're going to have a big inflatable planet strung between buildings on 43rd Street. So apparently I'm not going to get... On the 14th is the partial eclipse. Uh, so yeah. we're going to do that. And That's also, right. And the annular, the annular eclipse. I knew there were three things. The third thing is the annular solar eclipse. So we'll see about a 35 or 38 percent eclipse here. Sam and I are going to go to the Newport News Library for the partial for that. Sam, yep. sign in, please. Okay. And give her a ticket. Okay, so anyway, be thinking about, I know some people will want to go to the, star, the Stanton River Star Party, and I would love to go, but I'm going to have to bit, uh, beg off this time, but look at the club calendar for October, and if you're able to go on the 10th to the uh, solar viewing at Blackwater Library, we only need a couple people for that, but we're going to need a bunch of people on the 13th, Friday, 14th, Saturday, and 15th, Sunday at ODU. So if you can make one or all three of those, one or two or all three, please go to the October calendar and RSVP now. So we'll have a good uh, idea who's going to be able to be there. <sighs> also, this month, in fact, next week, a week from today, we're going to have a little event at Croatan Beach. Now, I was there, I think it was two years ago, with my granddaughter, Chloe, 
and the community center of the community of Croatan came out in force. There was about 50 people looking through our two little telescopes. So we could have, we need to have two or three or four at least to uh, sign up for that Croatan viewing. It's, uh, we, it's behind a person's house. The address is in the uh, Night Sky Network calendar. You can park in her driveway and walk behind the building out to the beach and set up on the beach. It was a, a nice event last time we did it. Okay, observing reports. Anybody have any observing reports? Gabriel. Um, the um, supermoon from two days ago. Or was it two days ago? Yeah, it was two days ago. First of two this month, apparently. Um, so I, I'm not sure if it was the smoke or the slow the horizon. I didn't get the telescope out to see it. I just saw the naked eye, but it was like this like, almost lunar eclipse. It was moment. orange, uh huh. It was very, very orange. Yes, yes. And it was very large, too. It was one of the kind of creepy, honestly. <laughs> Big moon was orange. I think it was the smoke in the upper atmosphere. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Bill Rust. Bill saw the dumbbell nebula M27. Yes, Paul. So um, pretty much I wake up pretty early in the morning and there's this beautiful, um, like, pretty good settings where the, I can see the sun exactly at the same level of the horizon. And so pretty much I have an S23 Ultra, so I have a really good zoom, 100 times zoom. So I was able to fully zoom in on the sun. And I was like, you know what the heck? You know, it's not, it's not going to harm my camera now if I get a picture so long on the horizon. Let me see what I can get. So I took a picture. And I was able to get some pictures of some sunspots. All right. Actually, on the sun, and I just compared that with some taken by NASA, and taken by some organizations, and I was just kind of, you know, taking more, kind of, see, just seeing what I could get. It was pretty interesting. So, I mean, if anybody has, you know, just a good enough camera, of course, this is just. So you can see sunspots. There's a lot of sunspots. In fact, Saturday, last Saturday was Saturday Sunday at the Elizabeth River Park. We had Alex. Uh, Miragliata, uh, Eddie Paris, Mel Spruill, Jeff Thornton, and me, we all had telescopes. Some of them had white light telescopes. Some had HA filters. A lot of sunspots, an amazing amount of solar flares, prominences all around the sun. It was awesome. Yes, Bruce. So I just started uh, my, my new project of uh, spectroscopy. So, uh, Get your reflector magazine. You can order um, a, uh, a simple uh, diffraction grating. It's pretty reasonable and some software. So the idea is you screw some filter into your camera. You get a, a spectrum, and then you put it through the uh, processing software, and it will line up the hydrogen polymer lines. So my goal for the star party is to get Vega or Sirius, an A-type star, and be able to identify the hydrogen polymer line. Yeah. Right. Good luck. All right. Early Good. The calibration phase. Yes, my uh, my presentation last Thursday at Garden Stars showed the spectrum and showed those lines of hydrogen and uh, the things that you can see just looking at the sun. And I might mention, uh, because we're talking about a lot of sunspots, we can sell these glasses now and help people look at the sun now because some of those sunspots are big enough you could see naked eye. Anyway, that's good. All right. Sky watch. We had a, a low turnout sky watch. About five or six people were there with telescopes. We, but we had an, uh, a group of people, about a dozen people, maybe 20, came through and they were enthusiastic and stayed around until we packed up early because the clouds rolled in about 930. But we were there for a couple of hours. Sky dew watch. Was, dew was real bad too. The dew was bad. Yeah. Uh, it was really wet, but uh, it still was a successful sky watch, even though it was uh, abbreviated. Okay, and, and you mentioned boardwalk astronomy. Tell us a little bit more about boardwalk astronomy, Jeff. Okay. I, uh, I think I attended boardwalk astronomy number three 
Nobody from the club came out except for me because it was terrible weather. So I thought, well, I'll be an optimist, you know. So I'll go out there. And it started raining. And I had my tarp over my telescope. And so boardwalk astronomy number three uh, was almost a complete failure because I, I went. I don't think we got credit because nobody saw anything. I couldn't even see the moon. It finally, finally cleared up. It was all cloudy. It was like a, a three-quarter moon or something, and we couldn't even see that. But the uh, latest is from, uh, from Dale that we don't have to split the money anymore with uh, Plaza Middle School. So I got to make sure that uh, if, if they've got a half, half of our money to switch that over with the uh, people over at the uh, boardwalk. I don't know who, who the contact is. But, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely need that because I used to submit the invoices to Chuck. Got it. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. The, the last boardwalk is strong. Oh, the last one. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell us about it. Go ahead. Um, it was my first one. And there were, I don't know, about four telescopes. Uh, we had, we had uh, two, Jeff, Jeff and I had two together, and there was a few small ones. Um, the small ones got shots of Venus. Because they could they could get it lower to the sky, and I was stuck on the moon. It was very hazy, but uh, so I was stuck on the moon. Jeff was able to actually get Alberio, Alberio, and, yeah. and others. But it's all up. We we probably had we had we had big big lines of people access some of the time. Sometimes more than more than ten people in a line watching the rain. The the crowd really liked it, and there was a lot of kids. And the kids liked it. But it was it was really enjoyable time. Okay, and the only other thing is I was at uh, Garden Stars this past Thursday, and uh, we had a good group, about 20 people. And they again they were very enthusiastic. They hung around for till 10 o'clock or later. And uh, we saw Alberio, we saw the moon, we saw Mizar and Alcor. Uh, didn't see Venus. It was Venus is getting too close to the horizon. It was behind the trees. We saw the ISS fly over. Oh, and we saw the International Space Station go over. Jeff Thornton had it timed, and as soon as it appeared, we watched it go all the way across the sky. And the people were thrilled to see the ISS. So we had a very good boardwalk astronomy. Garden stars. I mean, yeah, garden stars. Thank you. <laughs> garden stars at Norfolk Botanical Garden. Okay, any other observing reports? I saw the Antares launch at uh, Wallace Island. It shot movies of it. it's on, it's on yes. Facebook. So it, it is a pretty secret place to go. It's better than the visitor center, actually. Uh, it's about 3.1 miles from the, uh, from the site, where, from the launch pad. And when it, run, when it runs, you know, it takes like uh, 15 seconds to hear the thing. You see it go, and you don't hear anything for 10 or 15 seconds. All of a sudden, you know, it, it echoes everything. It was it was pretty loud and a lot of fun. Yeah, Jeff saw the Antares launch on Tuesday, and he put the video up on on the Facebook. Right, Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I, and, I saw it from the theater. Yeah, a lot of people did. They yeah, I saw it from too. Jeff's face. Did you? Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say though, I, I just came back from a trip out west, and the skies were beautiful. I took my ten inch telescope, piled it in there, and took it out every chance I got. So and. Everywhere, unfortunately, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, but you can see the little dipper, all seven stars, every location, wow. even when I was in town. Compared to the East Coast, everywhere out West is better, even in town. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I was never in a, like a major city like uh, a million people or something like that, but in a city with 50,000 people, you can still see it. Wow. So yeah. it's crazy. I, I tell people a lot about the time that I was at Keystone, Colorado. And I saw so many stars, I couldn't even find the Big Dipper until I got my bearings because it was just blended into the background. And just today, I was going through some old papers. I found that was 1996. It doesn't, hard to believe it's that long ago. Okay, ready for our meeting feature. Our special feature tonight, our special speaker is our Alcor, our Astronomical League correspondent, Bruce Powers. And, uh, he is a former Toastmaster and a, a, a 
featured speaker tonight. We're going to talk about the East Coast Star Party planning and star parties and why we want to go there. Thank you, George. Did you skip the encore report anyway? That's why we skipped it. Right. Gotcha. You can do that too, George. I have nothing to report. <laughs> I've been busy building this thing. That's minimize that in the chair. If you hit that minus sign, it makes it like a little bar. Here? Yeah. yeah. Okay, more better. Okay, good evening. Now that I'm done with all of these uh, tech things. Okay, so I'm Bruce Powers. I've been a member of Back Bay Amateur Astronomers for about 10 years now, since uh, 2013, since uh, one of my coworkers uh, shanghaied me into the former East Coast Star Party, which I'll talk about. So um, uh, I, I will start out my talk by saying that you, you have to be somewhat of an outdoorsman, okay, to be able to go to star parties and appreciate them. And uh, you also have to be um, somewhat of a, a electromechanically inclined if you're dragging telescopes and batteries and things out into a field. And each of those is a separate talk in its own right. So uh, I'm just going to assume that everybody kind of knows how to camp outdoors and how to hook up your battery to your telescope. So uh, I'm happy to entertain those kinds of questions, but that's my uh, entering assumption for this uh, audience this evening. So um, this is the Star Party machine. Uh, I, I bought uh, my little RV in 2017, uh, actually specifically to go to star parties. Um, I used to do a lot of uh, backpacking and in, in you know around the country, but uh, once I turned 50, I decided I did not want to sleep on the ground anymore, and so I sleep in this now um, when I crawl into bed around one in the morning. Okay, so um, anyway, that that's how I make all this happen. Um, so if you have any questions about RVing or camping or um, how to hook things up in a field. Uh, Come up to me later and I'll try my best to answer them. So this is um, at the uh, Stunt River Star Party in 2018. So actually this telescope used to be sitting in Sean Lozier's basement uh, <clears throat> all alone and you know, no starlight coming into it. And, and, and his wife said, get it out of here. So five years ago, uh, it was liberated and uh, Jim Tallman and I another club member redid the electric motors. So, oh, wow. you know, if you're looking for, you know, telescopes, I mean, I, I got a, you know, what, $2,000 telescope for free. It, all I had to do is spend about another 800 to get the electronics to work. So uh, don't ever discount free telescopes from BBAA. There, there's, there's an example of one right there. And I was looking at the sun at a nice solar filter out there. Cause you know, you're sitting out there all day with uh, lots of opportunities to see the sun. Okay. So, Shoot. All right, what I'm going to cover tonight is uh, the past East Coast Star Party, uh, the Staunton River Star Party, and the Green Bank, West Virginia uh, Star, Star Quest, which is one of my favorites. Uh, the Stellafane Party uh, in Vermont, I felt obligated to mention just because um, this is the 100th anniversary of the uh, amateur telescope making event that occurs in Vermont. I have not been myself, but I got some pictures for you tonight to entice you to go. And finally, I will finish with the uh, details of the uh, East Coast Star Party. And I've got a handout uh, on that. So if you have any questions about that this evening, we can go there. Okay. 
Okay, so the the past East Coast Star Party was located uh, here. Here we are up here in uh, the Chesapeake area. So you basically follow 168 down to uh, you know scenic Coin Jock, and then <laughs> go up Water Lily Road. And uh, for 25 years, we used to have the uh, the East Coast Star Party. Um, here, and by the way, I corresponded by Kent Blackwell, who was the previous sponsor of this event, by uh, email today, and he, he sends his greetings. Okay, so he'll be out there on Saturday at the site visit at 11 o'clock. Okay, so um, what I've also tried to do is give you an idea of the light pollution at each one of these locations. So this is a light pollution plot of... Um, the uh, Bortle scale light pollution, if, if anybody's familiar with that. Um, uh, seven is where we live. <laughs> and uh, one is where Sean just came from, okay? So um, everything else is kind of falls in between. So this is from a, a wonderful program that I really like called Astrospheric, if you're familiar with it. Uh, the, the app on your phone looks like a dodecahedron. It's pretty cool, but you can get a plot of what the light pollution is going to be where you want to go. So at the former location of the East Coast Star Party, it's, it's about, I, I would estimate somewhere around a portal four, somewhere in that range, okay? All right, so uh, for 25 years, we, we had some really nice telescopes show up over the years. Um, this is uh, Roy D Difference. Um, uh, Dobsonian that he made himself with uh, strain gauges that um, kept the thing completely rigid no matter what orientation it was in. He uh, won uh, some awards at Stellafane, the Amateur Telescope Makers ATM conference that I'll talk about. Um, this is a, a Richie Kreitchen. Uh, it's very Japanese. <laughs> so that showed up one time. So it was, it was really pretty incredible at you know, the, the types of uh, telescopes that would show up. Of course, the star of the show all the time was Kent Blackwell, here he is, that sponsored uh, the past East Coast Star Party and his uh, Dobsonian, which was 20 inches? 25, 25 <laughs> inches. <clears throat> yeah, you had to, had to get up to a ladder in the dark and, and, and uh, that was always an exciting enterprise. Um, and one time uh, he put some uh, uh, light amplification uh, stereo binoculars on it and we looked at the sombrero galaxy and it looked green, but we could see it. It was plain as day in there, okay? So um, this is probably, uh, I think in the uh, 2014 timeframe. And so there was always probably about, I'd say 25 people at this event. Um, and here I am with my new rig. This is in 2017. Um, this is when uh, I discovered what did not work on the new RV. It was a shakedown cruise. Anyway, I was able to get out there and uh, you know you can camp right by your telescope, which you'll be able to do if you have an RV, you know, for the one this fall. Okay. Um, so uh, at least one occasion we had a vendor come down to the uh, past East Coast star parties. A lot of star parties will have vendors show up. Um, we won't have any this fall, but stay tuned. We'll see how it goes. Um, I was very happy to have uh, New York camera concepts, I believe showed up all the way from New York. So I, I bought some eyepieces from this guy. I figured if he's gonna come all the way down to North Carolina, you know, in the middle of nowhere from New York, I'm gonna buy some eyepieces from this guy. So uh, that was really fantastic that he brought all of that hardware and all those big tents down there. Um, so, uh, and of course, you know, we always had the, the, the spaghetti feed and there's some chow hound here eating mm -hmm. too much. So, uh, yeah, okay. So um, uh, what, what, I, what did I like about the East Coast Star Party? I'll say this about each event. Um, this was a, I started going in 2013 at Jim Tallman's encouragement. Um, this is a, is a community of people that you, you see in the spring and the fall every year. So like a, a repeat uh, community of, of astronomy people. And actually I credit the East Coast Star Party with getting me back into amateur astronomy. And <clears throat> the Navy kind of took a bite out of my ability to uh, do amateur astronomy for a lot of years. 
And so uh, this event uh, really got me back into the hobby. Um, and uh, there <laughs> lots of good times. We had community dinners, we had raffles. We'll have a raffle this fall. Um, and we even had a, a Halloween a costume contest, which I, I still remember. Uh, so there were some very creative con uh, uh, costumes at the one October that we had them. So it, it, was, it, was, it was a good time. And um, uh, I have a, 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 a short little history here uh, that, that Kent sent me. Uh, it started in 1993. It, it started out pretty small, but uh, at one point you had upwards of 65 people attending. And uh, it was at the Hampton Lodge campground. And, you know, there, there are several people that, that helped uh, Kent out. He certainly didn't do it by himself. So they, uh, they always had a, a good community of people. And again, uh, you know, Kent Blackwell sends his greetings and he should be there this fall. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, next, the Staunton River Star Party. Um, <clears throat> before I forget, uh, I, uh, I'm not on commission, but I got some uh, little flyers here from, I went out to the Staunton River Party in the spring, uh, if anybody would like those. Uh, so Staunton River Star Party is not in Staunton, Virginia. Staunton River, Virginia is well north of this location. <clears throat> So if you're familiar with the city of South Boston out in Western Virginia, it's actually uh, near there. So um, you take 58 all the way out to South Boston and then work your way back. Uh, the, the address is actually in, in <coughs> scenic uh, metro metropolis of Scottsburg, Virginia. Um, and it's, it's actually right here on, on the Staunton River. So the light pollution here looks a little bit better than it did at uh, Coin Jock, North Carolina. <clears throat> so this is the astrospheric plot for um, Staunton River Star Party. And you'll, you'll see that there's kind of a hole <coughs> here. Huh. Why is there a hole in the Bortle light pollution plot, which is about a four again? Well, the reason is, is because this is a International Dark Sky Association IDA approved uh, dark sky site. There's actually uh, four of these in Virginia, which I'll discuss at the end tonight. But uh, these towns here, South Boston and Scottsburg, Chase City, uh, Clarksville and Boynton, um, all agreed to point their lights down and not use high pressure sodium lights. So that's actually a, a big success story, you know, for Virginia in preservation of a, a, nat a natural resource, which is a dark sky. So that's literally why that hole is there. So there's other ones up there, but I, I, I did talk to the park rangers and it took them quite a while to get that approval and working with these uh, nearby towns, but it is very dark there, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> How dark is it? It's really dark, I'll tell you. Washington National Forest above it, that's why it's so dark. Okay, all right, yeah. <clears throat> so that's what the star party of uh, light pollution looks like there. So Star River is very interesting. They have a, a large field um, <clears throat> and you can uh, either park your RV or your tent right on the field. They have power of the field, which it's all DC, but it's, it's pretty awesome. So you just pull up your little plug and plug your RV and your, your gear in. AC. Uh, AC. AC. It is AC? Yes, it oh, is. Oh, okay. I think I'm thinking of StarQuest. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, StarQuest is all DC. So anyhow, um, <clears throat> yes. Uh, don't run your air conditioner on hot days. You you will take out an entire row oh, of, of their power. So, so uh, they're, they're, they're limited AC. Yes, it is quite limited. Um, you will piss off a lot of people if you run your AC too long. So anyway, um, I don't participate in any of that. I stay at the, the, the campground over here where I can run my margarita maker all day long and nobody cares, okay? And my air conditioner, okay? All day, all night. It's got its own power or you got a generator? Uh, they're power sites. There's, 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 so Stone the River, river yeah. has own utilities. Right, oh, so, okay. so yeah. the Stone River State Park is a Virginia State Park 
and it, it has about 30 um, RV campsites that have um, water, sewer, and electricity. So they're about $45 a night. So, yep. they, so they, just to clarify, they don't, because uh, I tried, you're not allowed to plug in your RV on, on the field. Okay. They, they don't want you to. Okay. Yeah. I think somebody tried once and it, it ended well, badly. Sure people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It How ended, far is it from there to the campground? Um, like a five minute walk. Yeah, so this is what it looks like during the day. Uh, this is a, a nice drone shot from a couple of years ago, but it is it is dark, dark, dark here. It's it, it, how dark is it? It's so dark that um, one night uh, Jacob and I were coming out of the restaurant, uh, <clears throat> and they actually have red lights everywhere around the restaurant, so they don't destroy your night vision. <clears throat> and we walked out of the parking lot, and Jacob said, "Where is the truck?" <laughs> I said, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm out there trying to find my truck with this damn thing because it is so dark. We literally could not see it. It was only like nine o'clock and they had, you know, the red, they had red, uh, you know, LED lights along the whole field, but we literally could not find our truck. So it, it is dark out there. So that's why I go. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome dark site. <laughs> yeah. So, like I mentioned, um, the uh, uh, International Dark Sky Association uh, designation is, is out there, and um, very glad that you know Virginia has considered you know um, having a dark sky a, a true natural resource. And so, this is another shot of um, a lot of folks with you know bring their tents out. So, let's see, oops, sorry, and then. Uh, this is all, so this is in 2018. Um, so I, I, I finally figured out how everything on my new RV worked. And I got my 40 uh, year old uh, Celestron 8 out there on a uh, German equatorial mount. So um, again, the, the pictures really don't do it justice. But um, what, what I have been able to do out there is I found every galaxy in Markarian chain uh, that a 10 inch will pick up. So uh, I've been able to pick up uh, galaxies that are 85 million light years away, magnitude 10 plus. So it's really um, pretty incredible. I'm what toward the uh, Sombrero Galaxy event? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, just, just a little little side note: when you're looking for the Sombrero Galaxy, I use Corvus to crow, and you can star hop up to this. I call it the arrow. The arrow points to this straight thing, and that points toward the Sombrero Galaxy, which doesn't show up in the picture, but it's right about there. Is that Orion? No, it's not. Uh, 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 yeah. Bruce, is the star, star party spill over into the campground or no. do you hike your telescope over? Or you just no, you no. Yourself? So uh, the, the campground is basically a concession for the park. So there will be people there that are not part of the star party, okay. primarily on Friday and Saturday nights. So they're all rolling with their class A's and set up their awnings and they'll come over and say, what is all this? So yeah, they're, they're completely separate. Yeah. So the, um, what do I like about Staunton River? Uh, again, it's a community of people. Um, you know, you'll see, you know, the same group of people uh, in the spring and the fall every year. Um, they have an awesome restaurant, catered food. I don't bring hardly any food with me on this camping trip, which I'm really grateful because I don't have to cook as much. So we'll waltz over to the restaurant in the morning and get a uh, a galaxy omelet, and we'll get a you know a uh, you know um, sombrero galaxy hamburger or something like that. anything. Everything in the restaurant is astronomy themed, um, <clears throat> and they have uh, very good talks. They're going to restart their talks this fall. Um, I've seen some very technically competent people. Uh, hot chocolate coffee if you have yes uh, yeah you can get pretty wired at these things so um uh, i know i do uh, and and i tend to talk faster when that happens so come out and hear me talk really fast at <laughs> one in the morning um <clears throat> the uh chapel hill astronomical society otherwise known as chaos organizes this with the staunton river uh a state park and this event actually was uh, the impetus for um, me or the 
past year, two years actually, uh, to try to restart the East Coast Tarpa. Because I looked around, I said, hmm, Chip Oaks has a big field. <clears throat> Chip Oaks has a campsite and it has a lot of the similar infrastructure to Staunton River that what we'll see at Chip Oaks. Okay. So um, uh, it, 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 it is quite dark. Uh, come out and check it out. It, it's only like, uh, I think 80 bucks. They went up a little bit, you know, for, you know, the whole week. So uh, anybody have any questions about Staunton? Who's been to Staunton River? Anybody? Okay. I've been to the surf but I've been down there or they have one of their observance sessions. I can, I can confirm from this where it is very dark out there. It is. Yeah. Cause so go, come check it out. You, you owe it to yourself to get out of the city and be able to compete with Sean Lozier about how many stars you can see in the Little Dipper. You should comment on the temperature because uh, the spring it was in the 20s. Yeah. So just be prepared. You'll freeze. And in the fall, it's cold. It was in the <laughs> um, No. Not, not that many. Yeah. In the, in the spring, you will be cold. In the fall, you might get hot. Uh, I don't know, 80 feet. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty low. It's not in the mountains. It's not in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. In the spring, it, it, it can get cold. So that, that gets into a separate, a separate topic, which is camping. And that's a, another talk for another time. Yeah. One night, I forgot to turn on my dew heater mm -hmm. and I went to Look through my telescope, it was all covered with dew. I had to shut it down. So I spent the night listening to Patrick Martelli's telescope. There you go. Well, <laughs> so that's another, George brings up a good point. Uh, Starting River, Start River, I've looked through probably 20 different kinds of telescopes. So <laughs> if, if you are only used to looking at your telescope all the time, you can look at all these other people that bring all this <clears throat> quite expensive hardware out there and now I'm actually thinking about buying an apochromatic refractor because of this star party. Yes, yeah, they, they bring some 25, 30 inch things. Gabriel. Is... I've seen some pictures of people with like 30 inch stuff. I know, I know. Some absolute monsters. Yeah, they bring some huge scopes to this thing. So if you want to see some you know, um, pretty innovative hardware, some people make them themselves. <clears throat> uh, New Moon Telescopes brings his stuff out there. Uh, so yeah come out and look at through somebody else's telescope okay opt so uh green bank west virginia star quest so this one is, is definitely a hike um it, it's it, it, it's definitely worth it though so green bank west virginia um you basically come out here to act the actual Staunton, virginia okay and this this is uh 81 here okay and then you take it's not shown here but you can take 64 out to take two, 219 up to uh, Green Bank. Anyhow, if anybody's ever been to Snowshoe, West Virginia, to Snow Ski, okay, it's it's actually right near there, okay? But <clears throat> you'll find, you know, there's less and less and less of everything. No telephone wires, no cell phone towers. Why? Because this is a radio quiet zone for the world's largest uh, radio telescope. So I'll, I'll, I'll get to you. All right. So, um, so here is the light pollution at Green Bank. So notice uh, we are much darker than we were uh, previously. Okay, so now we're probably a, a Bortle three. So here's Snowshoe, here's Green Bank. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is the astrospheric plot for the light pollution at Green Bank. So there, um, it, it, I, I can attest, I went in 2018 because Chuck Jago kept harassing me to go. So I finally went, okay. So um, here's a picture of the, the, the campground. You know, so you can camp uh, near uh, the world's largest radio telescope. But what's nice about Green Bank is they have uh, this wonderful science center at the <clears throat> National Radio Astronomy Observatory. So uh, they have a nice cafe here. If you don't have a tent or an RV, you can sleep in the bunkhouse. But you better like people that snore if you <laughs> if you stay in the bunkhouse. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that is an option. I didn't take it. Anyhow, so uh, Green Bank is is an amazing place. It is actually a um, national uh, scientific facility, but they open it up to op you know optical astronomy. But you can also do <clears throat> your own radio astronomy there. And I'll tell you briefly about that. So. Uh, this is the 
infamous Green Bank Telescope. Um, if you get there early enough, <laughs> you can actually take a tour to, to crawl all the way up the top of this thing and look down. <clears throat> they don't take many people to do it, and they only do it for one day. Okay, so I had a friend of mine, so they, they will pivot the whole dish up. So this dish is actually about as large as a football field, and it rotates uh, in azimuth and altitude, and points itself at all kinds of uh, amazing facilities. So uh, things in, in space. Uh, so that's a model at the visitor center. So you can um, see there, there's probably, a, again, you know, th these aren't, you know, giant conventions at all. There's probably maybe, you know, I'd say 50 to 60 people there as well. Um, this is the, uh, the a shot of, of the science center itself. Um, what, what's really interesting to me about Green Bank, it, it is the birthplace of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI. So um, <clears throat> I, while I was in graduate school in uh, California years ago, I got a chance to meet and uh, talk to Frank Drake, who was one of the first uh, SETI researchers. And he did his um, initial work on some radio telescopes uh, <clears throat> smaller than the Green Bank Telescope, but um, uh, if you're familiar with uh, uh, the movie Contact by you know, Carl Sagan, um, uh, the Ellie Arroway in that movie was modeled off of Jill Tarter, who was also a researcher here at Green Bank. So um, I was able to, I go crazy in the gift shop. I buy books about Frank Drake and Jill Tarter and read them. And um, the, uh, the, uh, the ability to do breakthrough science here is, is happening every day. And they will brief you on it in talks at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. So they are um, looking at uh, something called the Breakthrough Listen Project, which is also part of SETI. You can, so you can see how they're running the Breakthrough Listening Project at the control room of that <laughs> for $120 for the week. So it, it's pretty interesting. Um, the, um, the lectures here are the best I've ever seen. So uh, we had a, a, a speaker on the Parker Solar Probe, you know, the, uh, the year that I went. So uh, if, you, if you, you know, make the effort to trek into West Virginia to go to Green, Green Bank, def, definitely take it because it, it's, it's worth your time. When is that one? Um, <clears throat> it's in June every year. Um, and, and, and they also have a, a pretty, uh, pretty uh, rich uh, raffle, you know, prize pot. And so I, I, I've seen people win, you know, entire telescopes at this thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they have, a, <clears throat> they have a pretty big budget. And there's a, there's a club in West Virginia that, that runs all of that. Oh, oh, and I, before I forget, I was able to do a, uh, a seminar while I was there. They have a one of the older radio telescopes that, that basically is just it's fixed and it just sits there and looks at this at their southern meridian. You can um, go in there and tune it, and it takes about three hours to do this. But uh, they'll wait for the the Milky Way, you know, to pass overhead during the daytime, uh, and mm -hmm. you can use this ancient device called a strip chart recorder, <laughs> uh, which has the the voltage output of the horn antenna and you can actually you know plot you know there is the you know uh, uh roughly two kilohertz uh you know transmission of neutral hydrogen in the milky way as it passes overhead during the daytime and you can take home your little strip chart recorder and say look i saw the milky way in the middle of the day with a radio telescope so they will actually let you use that device with you know a docent there to help you so uh yeah and I, I actually learned how to build my own radio telescope from a seminar if I wanted to do that in all my spare time that I don't have. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so uh, Stellafane Party of Vermont. Has anybody been to Stellafane? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so here's Boston and here's Stellafane. So I have not been to Stellafane uh, as a disclaimer. But I, I felt it important to include it in this talk because it is the big daddy rabbit of all um, 
star parties. And uh, again, you know, it, it's it's probably about a portal for when they started it 100 years ago, it probably was down here. Now, you know, uh, they have the same issue that we all do. Okay, so Stellafane is a big production. Um, they have this pink clubhouse. I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, somebody decided to paint it pink for some reason. But the, the big flick for this is... I the, do know that. You do know. We got, we got a discount and they mixed all the pink together. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe that's what it is. So um, they want to show you at this event how to make amateur telescopes. So this one is like made from wooden dowels and um, uh, finally, fi sticks. finally machined. And there's just all of these homemade telescopes. There, there's hardly any telescopes there that are store bought. So uh, anyway, I included here just because this is the hundredth year of the Springfield Telescope Makers. They were founded in 1923, and this is their 100th anniversary. So um, if you want to go up and th they have <laughs> this many people at their events, wow. uh, and it's, it's quite the production. Um, That's an old scope. Right? And this is an old scope. Uh, you used to have to make your own back in the 60s and the 50s, but this is how people made them with, you know, basically pieces of pipe. Uh, that only Ben Loyola could engineer now. So anyway, so um, this is, I think the shot is roughly from the 1950s-ish. <clears throat> but the only reason I include this here is because th this event has been around for, for quite a long time. So if you're looking for the, the pinnacle of star parties to go to, go check out Stellafane. Exactly. Apparently if it rains a lot, it's called Stella Rain. So. Is yep. Stellafane bigger than uh, Okitex? I, I don't know. And uh, Okitex has some huge turnouts from what I understand, like okay. multiple hundreds, like two, 300 people. Okay. Anniversary already passed in June? Or is it next um, I think it's this summer. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. June was the brother, so far. Right. Okay. So, uh, so, well, George can pass. I have some. So I'm briefly going to go over the uh, East Coast Star Party and how that will work. Um, uh, I've been plugging this for about a year now, and people keep asking me, what are the details? Well, there they are on a piece of paper for you. Um, all, all of the many other details that you might want to ask about, I'm, I'm briefly going to go over here tonight. Okay. So light pollution at Chip Oaks. Um, it's certainly not as dark as uh, some of the other sites we've discussed tonight. It's probably about a, a Bortle uh, four or five, um, primarily just because it's, uh, you get a lot of, um, this, the light dome here is primarily from Williamsburg, okay? So um, here we are over here in uh, really bright Hampton and you follow uh, Route 10 out to Surrey and then cut your way up to Chip Oaks. The, the, the sign is actually very good and you'll be able to locate it no problem. Again, this is a uh, state park. Okay, so that's the astrospheric plot for the light pollution, but it's, 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 it's better than where we are. Okay. Everything is better than where we are. Okay, including Montana. Right. So um, this is the extremely high speed, low drag uh, <clears throat> registration marvelous site created by Mr. Sean Lozier. So everybody, please give Sean Lozier a hand. I can't do this. He did it. it I, I'm just talking to it, okay? So um, all of this is on your sheet. The, the registration uh, is 60 bucks. We ask that you send it in by September 8th so that Rich Roberts can uh, suck money out of your account and add it to his roster, okay? Um, and that covers the entire duration. Uh, if you're gonna get a uh, RV site um, or get a, uh, if you want water and electricity for your tent, um, you should go to the, the RV site and reserve your uh, tent or RV site at uh, reserveVAparks.com, okay? The park doesn't do any of that. It's all on a website. Yes, sir. I wanna do it quick. 
I believe it. Right. Yes. So um, the, the sites are, are, are going fast. So uh, just because we're having this event there, uh, some of them will fill up. I, I've reserved mine six months ago. So um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, they have water, electric, and sewage at the campsite. We don't have any of that on the field here. So I'll uh, show you where the field is. <clears throat> so this is a, a Google, Ma bleh, Google Maps shot of th this is kind of what it looks like in the background. Again, this is from uh, Sean Lozier's awesome website with a section on the observing field has everything you want to know that we know currently about the observing field. Um, this here is the Chip Oaks Mansion and I'm sorry, over here, Chip Oaks Plantation House, excuse me. These are uh, some outbuildings. So in our initial site survey in March, we, we managed to you know, uh, locate two uh, fields where we'll be able to accommodate um, sites uh, with, with tents and telescopes. Um, so tentatively, we think we may be able to you know, park some RVs over here, but um, I don't know how many we'll be able to accommodate. So. They do not have hookups. So uh, if, if you are a completely dry camper RV, good for you. Um, but you'll be basically, you know, going at least two nights without you know, any, any inputs. You'll have to run everything on battery. Okay, so there are restrooms here. Uh, we are gonna provide a, uh, at least one or two more porta potties over here. Um, all of our all night coffee will be over here. And um, the, uh, We'll there have power too. They, they, yeah, yes, the power to charge your batteries up there. Correct. Yeah, there is a battery charging station there. So uh, this used to be like a festival location at Chip yeah. Oaks for the Pork and Pine Festival, which is now defunct, and they need electricity to run some things. So we're going to take it over. Yeah. So um, if you want to charge your batteries, that's available there, and uh, you'll during the day. There's actually quite a lot to do here. Chip Oaks is a working farm. It's been a working farm since the 1700s in Virginia. So they have a very interesting um, uh, farm implements museum. You can tour the Chip Oaks plantation house. You can go find uh, shark's teeth fossils in the side of clay cliffs on the James River. And you can go to the petting zoo a little farm area with a very friendly pork, uh, uh, porcine pig who will uh, eat your corn that you can feed him. So there, there's lots of, um, and they have a goat and some rabbits and the kids love it. So um, there's, if you want to bring your kids, there's definitely uh, things for the kids to do there. Yes, sir. Do you have any rule against bringing your own pork? Um, let me get back to you on that. So I- It's Tom, they wouldn't let you find me. We, I'm sorry, we, we couldn't hear you. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, the question was, um, does Chip Oaks State Park, you know, allow us to run generators on the field? I, I strongly suspect that they won't allow it all night long. So if you, you know. The Stan wouldn't let you run a generator, like a portable generator. Right. We'll find yeah. out this weekend. The yeah. Site yeah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll update this probably with uh, some times for the events that we need to tweak a little bit. And uh, you know, give you an, uh, some inputs on the generators, but yeah. Ooh, information all sleep, so. yes. So the the I, I have a generator, but I don't bring it to star parties. I can't bring it to Green Bank, West Virginia, because it generates too much RF noise, and they are like no generators at all anywhere. Jesus. They'll actually come after you if you light your cell phone off. So yeah, it's exciting. That that's another story. So where's the RV camping with electric water? Um. RV camping with electric and water is it's up to the north. Yeah, it's oh, way out uh, there. It's it's a drive. Oh, yeah, it's like there. a ten minute oh. drive from the yeah. campground to the yeah. school. So I'm I'm gonna stay there because I don't camp anymore. I just clamp. So uh, I'll probably drive you know the ten to fifteen minutes over here and uh, leave my scope set up over there overnight. Okay, it probably is too far to walk. Yeah, you're not walking it. Yeah, you're yeah. definitely not walking it. Yeah, at least bring a bike. Yes, it, it is not within walking distance, so you'll have to drive back and forth. So we're, we're going to try to figure out 
Uh, there is a parking uh, area over here. If you've ever been to a Night Watch event that we sponsor at Chip Oaks, this is the parking lot where we park. Okay. So I'm going to park here and walk over here and use my scope, walk back and drive back over to the campsite. Thank you, so that's, that's my plan for that. All right. Um, so there is a public observing night on Friday the 15th. We're, we're probably going to have to tweak these times based on what we find out this weekend. So um, George has pointed out that 6 to 7.30, we're going to be sitting around in the daylight. So that's probably need to change that. Anywho, um, uh, the park is going to uh, administer the public observing night. And again, the dates are the 14th through the 17th. OK. All right. So um, like I mentioned earlier, there are four, uh, one, two, three, actually, you know, five deep uh, you know, dark sky parks in Virginia. So I, I pulled this off of a Department of Conservation Recreation website. Um, Staten River is only one of them. Uh, Natural Bridge, James River State Park, which George Reynolds has been to. Yes. Uh, Sky Meadows, and then Rappahannock County Park. So um, I, I don't know what their state with uh, being an Ida Dark Sky Park is or is not, but um, the, the, the state of Virginia actively promotes uh, astronomy in these areas. And these are some shots from those areas, Natural Bridge and, and the other locations. So um, it <laughs> maybe over time, you know, we can, you know, see where Chip Oaks will fall out. I, I don't know if they'll be eligible for Ida just because of the Williamsburg light dome. So we'll see where it goes. Okay, so last slide. Um, oh, by the way, um, we do have a star party etiquette. Uh, this is available on the website. Um, this is mostly for uh, guests, but it, it kind of applies to um, <clears throat> the public night primarily. So we'll hand these out on the public night. Right at the top, it says, um, don't grab the eyepiece. No, don't grab the eyepiece, please. Okay, right at the top. Y'all ever been to a public star party night? You'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, All right. So why should I go to one of these? Okay, um, my top sell is there a lot of experienced amateur stars all in one place for multiple days. You can pelt them with questions. And they answer them all, and they're enthusiastic, and they don't tell you to go away. <laughs> what what better learning opportunity can you find to figure out amateur astronomy? Your 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 learning curve will go off the charts. Um, there are many people that are re repeat attendees every year, so it's a community of people that you see at the beginning of the year and at the end, and they'll they'll challenge you and say, hey. Did you buy that bigger telescope? No, I haven't, I haven't bought it yet. Well, you better get hot and buy it. <laughs> so anyway, I got mine out of Sean Lodger's basement. So uh, multiple astronomy learning opportunities for learning from vast experience all in one place. Lots of talks about uh, space science uh, subjects, um, everything, astrophysics, cosmology, you can possibly think of. Green Bank blew my mind with the talks that were available at, at Green Bank. And uh, Stone River is no slouch. Darker skies than most cities. You're able to find uh, more deep sky objects. Uh, I'm a visual observer. Uh, I'm <laughs> allergic to astrophotography. That's why I'm doing spectroscopy. Uh, but <laughs> if you're one of those people, and I mean that with the most respect, if you're one of those people. <laughs> There are far better opportunities for astrophotography than in cities, obviously, okay? So there's there some folks that truck out some 30-inch telescopes with generators and CCD cameras, and um, they have some pictures of some truly astounding things hanging inside of their trailers full of red lights, okay? Um, you, uh, I'm an outdoorsman. I like being outdoors. It's, it's a way for me to, you know, go on vacation and be with like-minded people. And the larger parties have presentations on um, multiple topics. Uh, many of them have catered food, which is so awesome because then you don't have to bring, bring a big cooler of stuff for your camping experience. And a lot of them also have uh, astronomy equipment vendors, okay? 
So um, I, I can't say uh, enough positive things about star parties. They will increase your, your learning for amateur astronomy. Um, you'll get to collect all kinds of cool bling. Here, here's, my, here's my flare. I have, I have six pieces of flare. That's from an 80s movie. I want to you But I've been every year since uh, the old East Coast Star Party shut down for Staunton River. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can go to the, the cafe and show up all of, your, all of your pins that you win for your observing awards. Where else can you do that? You can't do it at work. People look at you funny. I do it at Staunton River, and they think it's cool. There you go. Nowhere else. Don't, don't do it anywhere else. Okay. So um, that pretty much concludes my talk. And uh, again, please thank your Star Party Committee, which consists of Mr. Sean Lozier, Mr. George Reynolds, Mr. Rich Roberts, uh, off in TV land, and myself um, and Kent Blackwell, advisor emeritus. So wow. with that, uh, I will take any questions. I have one thing to add too. If you guys don't like camping, because I know Bruce mentioned outdoors then, and some people aren't that way. They do have cabins at Chipotle, mm -hmm. and they have yurts. Mm -hmm. Now, yurts, yurts. Those, those hard tents, like the circular tent. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, I, I've, I've been looking online while we, while he's been talking, and I, I don't see any cabins left. Um, right. But there are, it looks like there are a couple of yurts. They look nice too. What I saw online, they do look nice. There's an actual bed in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, if all else fails, you know, you could, the nearest restaurants to, uh, uh, There's nothing. Or, or, I know, but you got to drive to Smithfield. You got to drive to Smithfield, which is 20, minute. 25 minutes to Smithfield. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So, a single uh, thing. Yeah. And, um, uh, as, is there a hotel in Smithfield? Yes. Yeah. So you, you could, you could stay. Actually, you know, if you just want to go to the public night on Friday night, it's about an hour out there in no traffic, probably about an hour, 15 minutes. If you just want to come out and visit, um, just please don't arrive after dark. That makes everything harder for us. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, so you can park and then drive away at, in the parking lot? Yeah. No, that mess things up. No, I mean, you just can't park right next to your no, telescope okay. and then drive away in the middle of the night. Okay. You might run over somebody's $5,000 telescope, yeah. like mine. Yeah. I would be mad. Don't do that. Okay. Oh, I have another question. I'm sorry. Um, oh. Because I'm I've never been, and I'm I'm sure there are other people that haven't ever been. Um, if you bring your telescope but you don't camp, do you usually take your telescope with you, or do you leave it there based on the weather? What do you recommend? Um, well, so uh, I I would only bring it to the public night because basically, if you bring it on uh, Thursday or Saturday night, you know the the park needs to keep track of the people that pay so well i i, I mean i've already paid for the whole weekend i just okay, don't right. know where i'm gonna stay good okay. yeah I think what she's saying say if you plan to like observe at night and then maybe leave during the day or leave some point at night yeah. did you just leave your telescope set up on the field yeah. somewhere then come back to it and leave yeah. or break it down at the end of the night go wherever you're going and come back and put it together yeah, what I don't most, go either way. I've never been either. This well, so what most people, people do look out for you. We'll we'll have somebody there monitoring the site basically the entire time. Yeah. Okay. So I don't plan to pack up my 10 inch telescope, which takes me about an hour to put it together anyway. So I just put a reflective cover over it and uh, I leave it on the field. Nobody's ever messed with it any place I've ever been. Right. So we'll have people monitoring it. Um, I'm gonna leave my scope out you know during the day because i like to uncover it and look at the sun yes sir yeah i have a, a, a tent about 10 foot in diameter i have a okay okay yeah okay that? i'm sure yeah of course yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of, you know, we've got two big fields and a lot of space for something that large. 
So, ma'am, did I answer your question online? Sandy. Okay. Okay. Hey, Sandy, if you set up next to me, I'll keep an eye on your scope. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't currently yeah. have a lot. Hey, it's not going to be like 100 people. It's probably going to be more like 20 ish. Yes. Okay. It's going to be us. It's, it, it, like, the, the people that have signed up, it's, it's us. So, you know, yeah. it, it's not like some random who is this kind of person. So, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Someone, if you're, you're worried about your game, so, someone will keep an eye on it for you. Okay. Yeah. So, for the public night, uh, the park ranger will be there. Actually, the park ranger will be available on call the entire event. So, you know, we do have law enforcement available. So, not that I anticipate needing it, but that that's part of the reason that we're going there. It's free to the public. The public night is free. The public night is free. That's part of the arrangement with the that's state. The 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 do the whole thing. Yep. Okay. And you'll see, you say the it's so remote, no one's going to go there unless they're there. The public, they're good, they know about it to even get there. They're not going to stumble on that state park. Yeah. It's remote. It is very remote. <laughs> and you have to wind through a lot of little country roads in yes. the middle of nowhere to get there. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been there and it's oh, yeah. dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Start on time, end on time. That's my goal. Very good. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ruth. Before we adjourn, uh, there's two things besides the uh, one thing besides the uh, door prize. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes. You brought a telescope that was donated. Can you tell us about that? Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Donated. Donated telescope. The uh, donated telescope was missing a few pieces, and I. Uh, I'm <laughs> no, no, we're only talking nickel dime stuff. I, I just went, it was missing one set screw for the little uh, adjuster. It's not motorized or anything, so it's it's completely manual, but it is equatorial mount and it's um, it's an Orion four and a half inch telescope. It's got pretty clean optics, not bad. Uh, it's got a little dusty uh, sitting in my garage anyway. So I thought I'd go ahead and offer it to anybody in the club or that's online here uh, to see if anybody wanted it. Well, I'll help you. I'll help deliver it if you want me to do that too. What's the, what's the numbers on it? What is it again? Uh, I think it's, um, it's a V. looks like a V4 and a half. A, okay, V4 and a half. All right. V4 and a half refractor? Yeah, it is. A V4501. No, is it that, half of or? It's a. It's, it's a. Uh, but what we're talking about? It's a reflector. Oh, it's a reflector. Yeah. Oh. Did I say refractor? Well, I, said, yeah. I thought you said refractor. All right. Uh, what pieces are I want to put a piggyback. Uh, well, I had to put a set screw for one of these things. I had to buy one with set screws. That was a that was like ten cents. And uh, what else did I do? I, I I found an extra knob to hook it up there. So you got a complete telescope for nothing. It's got a couple eye pieces here, twenty five millimeter. I think this is basically a that is a Dobsonian, and they make you can make a, the That's wooden true. base for it, put it on laser loose. Uh, Lazy That's true. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't want to use this equatorial mount, which is sort of tricky, uh, you can make a wooden base and a Dobsonian mount for it. Well, so, does anybody in here want a free coat? <laughs> no one? I don't want to take it home. <laughs> now, how about in the peanut gallery? Anybody want a free telescope out there? Sandy just bought her brand new telescope. <laughs> All right. So I'd explain these magazines for us. Okay, I passed out some old copies of the Sky and Telescope magazine that have been uh, in my house, and my wife has been bugging me to get rid of them. Some of them go back as far as 2002. It makes interesting reading. 1999. Okay, all right, 1999. The 60s interesting so. reading about the articles that they have it, and also the ads. The ads are fantastic. And those book, those magazines are more than twice as thick back then as they are today. They're very thin today. There's a lot of good stuff in there. It's a lot of fun to read. Okay, time for the drawing. We have three sets of uh, these lithographs from NASA. All right. So we're going to give away three of them. David, would you pick out the first one, please? Thank you, sir. 
things that anybody wants to bring up before we adjourn? It's two minutes after nine. We're right on schedule, right? Just a couple minutes after. All right. The August meeting of the BBAA has been adjourned.